well. I mean, I was just on the phone to um, the guy, my, my mate Colin, um, who is organising my honeymoon. And so just before we were chatting, I was like, right, so how many nights in Kyoto in Japan? OK, <laughs> and then we'll go to Hak- like. So that's kind of what I'm stressing about Have you now. got a honeymoon exactly TM? Is that what you're telling me, Jessie? <laughs> oh, my God. Basically, to a manager for your honeymoon. I can't do anything without. Like, I would describe somebody. that as unorthodox. No, no, he's really good. Hi, Colin. I, I told him to listen. I was like, I've got to go, Colin. I'm on six music. <laughs> Just don't ask him for per DMs. It'll get very weird. <laughs> oh well, listen. Very good luck with that. I know that you'd Thanks. said in uh, another interview that you wanted to get the you want to tie the knot first mm. before the album yeah. came out. That so, didn't happen. Right. Uh, no, it is going to happen. No, it happen. is happening. Yeah. Because we don't have the, the dates yet. We don't have the specific exact date. So I wondered if you have them in yeah. your mind. What, so, the dates for... Yeah, for everything. For the wedding. I have, wedding, the, I have the date. Yeah, the, the, the date for the wedding is, is forthcoming and it comes before the album. The album's out on the 6th of October. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, so 6th of October. Yeah. That's brilliant. There were some dates around that as well. Other dates, uh, live dates. Yeah, I'm doing like a mini run of very kind of intimate shows just to show the record to people in and i've decided to do them all pretty much in churches which is kind of bizarre <laughs> seeing I'm, I'm jewish i couldn't couldn't get the synagogues um but um but yeah i um i'm doing churches and it's going to be very nice and very gorgeous and then i'm going to i don't know if i'm allowed to say the other thing in january Let's i'm allowed to say oh yes! thumb up i'm Excellent. playing Princeton academy which is just so the, the, the biggest thing ever for me so i'm doing a bigger run in january which will include Brixton academy oh my goodness and other places but being a Londoner, I've always wanted to play Brooks and Kevin. That is a huge. Have you played before with anyone else? Because I know, I know last Disposure. time you were right. Okay, so yeah. you performed with them there. Yeah. Because I know that last time you were in the room that we're standing in, or you're standing in right now. <laughs> I think you were singing back up for someone else. You were singing for yeah. Jack Pinata. I was uh, on George Lamb's show, and I was singing Great back up for um, for Jack. And that must have been, I don't know, like five five years over five years ago six years ago i don't know so um yeah we were in this room times change a bit though i mean have you got used to it all yet i've definitely got more yes i it's 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 a fun job and it doesn't i feel a bit more relaxed this time around which is nice yeah not so petrified you can relish it a bit yeah i think so okay brilliant well uh, we we look forward to being the unofficial warm-up we consider this a bit of a rehearsal for all of those gigs that you've got coming up um jesse what are you going to sing for us first I'm going to attempt tough love. Yeah. <laughs> Jesse Ware live on BBC Six Music. Let's give it a whirl. Come on. All right. It's true And I've been thinking about what to say or not 
beautiful song yeah yeah it's, well it's, done good work it's thank you it's that's the first time that i've sung it live and it well well no i sung it in poland but jesus it's high <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say it's way i up mean there i'm like register. i'm really you know i'm trying my best up there and yeah you have to rely on a lot of reverb well, up it there. sounds amazing thanks lauren <laughs> Tell me a little bit about uh, the recording process yeah. for the new album, because you work with production duo Benzel, who I yeah. think you'd re recorded with before. Mm -hmm. um, how was that? How did that come about? So uh, there's two people in Benzel. Yeah. There's um, a guy called Two Inch Punch, mm -hmm. who is on my label, PMR, and has been my friend for years. And then there's Benny Blanco. Now, Benny Blanco is... Um, you may know him as a producer who has made songs like Diamonds and some Kesha songs and some Katy Perry songs mm -hmm. and Wiz Khalifa and he's like he's a big pop guy mm -hmm. and they've been friends for years and they started this kind of side project so they were just like we're going to make some music and um and then Ben um they're both called Ben as well which is very confusing <laughs> so Two Inch Punch said listen I'm in New York we're making really fun music do you want to come over it, I think you should so I think it was about like two years ago I went over okay maybe three years um and just hung out with them and got on really well with them and then you know I my album hadn't even come out yet so then I toured my whole album when I got a chance to do some writing which was last year in April I went to New York and just worked with the boys okay and we just that's how it kind of cemented that I definitely wanted to work with them on this record. So they've done about five tracks on the album. And Brilliant. The writing process uh, sounds interesting. Mm. I heard I heard several stories, um, Tales of Whiskey Sessions oh, God. with Miguel, and yeah. then uh, Whole, Food, Whole Foods Salad <laughs> with Ed Sheeran. Which <laughs> I sound really exciting, <laughs> don't sounds, I? Me and Ed. like a bit of a contrast. Rocking out in Whole Foods. Um, yeah, no, um, to be honest, uh, the Whiskey Session was uh, celebrating the fact that we'd done this really cool track that i love it's one of my favorites on the album it's called kind of sometimes maybe and i'd written it with miguel and miguel is somebody that i love and i listen to kaleidoscope dream so much his album and then you know he's writing with me and we made we did a reference to you know there's a line in it that says do i get lonely at all no because jamie and johnny and jack keep me warm <laughs> and i i love whiskey miguel loves whiskey so we were like after we'd written this song that we loved we were like let's go and drink some whiskey <laughs> drunk loads of whiskey oh. was like cheersing all night being like this is great next day had a session with miguel again had the worst hangover ever and i wrote this <laughs> song called you and i forever where if you listen to the vocal literally it's it's getting me. and that's the vocal because i had i had gatorade in my hand and like a throbbing headache but yes and then ed i treated him to a salad and whole foods yes you know? that's probably no hangover i don't there. know i'm not very rock and roll so this is it i get hangovers and i can't do the whiskey thing i love it but i can't do it and then you know i I like to eat a lot, so yeah. yeah. That's a good combo. I like the uh, the implication that one of the vocals on the new album was delivered in the fetal position, though. Oh my, <laughs> it was just it, it, I, I kind of cupped these headphones, kind of being like, "Oh, this is so." I can I didn't even want to hear anything, let alone my annoying voice that day. <laughs> yeah. When you end up playing it live, people are going to be like, "Wow, she really belts it out when she's like." It's not like, <laughs> it's true. It's not like that on the album. Yeah. Um, you've described yourself as growing in confidence between mm. the last record and this. Yeah. And you said you think you can hear 
that in the new album. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's interesting, isn't it? Because, you know, when the, the first record was kind of so successful, it's, mm. it must be a surprising experience when that happens. Not because you don't yeah, think definitely. that your album has the potential to do that, but just because it's a weird thing to happen in your life. Definitely. How long did it take for you to kind of get used to that and, and realise that, that that was OK and, you know, you could kind of stop saying thank you and kind of get on with the job? I think I... I don't think I got used to it. I just, it was a bit of a whirlwind where, you know, this, my album came out that I made with Dave Akumu, pretty much me and Dave and Julio Bashmore. And, um, and it was just an album that was meant for us and, and the people that worked on it and we, we loved it. And then people liked it. And then, you know, I was touring for about a year and a half and like the Mercury nom and, and, and the Brit nom, it was quite bizarre and quite overwhelming. So just, I didn't have time to really think about it. We were too busy doing stuff and it was amazing and I appreciated it. This time around, I think really writing this album has made me realise that I am more confident and I'm a bit more comfortable with this being my job. Yeah. Um, I don't resent this as a job at all. I love it. But I think it was interesting to see how I, you know, compared to the first t time I was writing my album, you know, Devotion, to seeing me in the studio this time, I was like, okay, yeah, maybe, maybe I do know what I know what I want a bit more. I'm going to, you know, use my voice a bit more. And yeah. so it's, it, I, I, I think it all kind of sunk in when I was writing this album. I more. think sometimes that, I mean, that's my, I don't want to say that it is if it isn't, but sometimes that's a, a bit of a thing for women, especially in an environment that can be quite male, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? There's, that, that you've got to be feel confident and say, actually, I want to do it this way or mm -hmm. I'm a bit more interested in, you know, it, it sounding like this specific thing yes. and, and then articulating that, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I think I was an absolute pain in Benzel's backside um, a lot of the time because I didn't agree with them and we clashed, And but it was completely creative and then we'd agree. But you, you felt like the moany cow in the corner that was being like, oh, I no, I don't want, because I know what I want. But, um, mm. but no, I think, yeah, I've learned how to kind of speak my mind a bit more. But, you know, I, the thing is, when Dave and I were working together on Devotion, I, we were just like in a massive loving of like we were working in his Lewisham um, flat and just he was nurturing me and it was so lovely and then it was like right go flee the nest like fly, yeah. fly the nest and do your thing and then I was like okay wow okay now I need to say what I want and not be scared to say what I want. Yeah I can't really imagine anyone having cross words with Dave Kumu in that way. That, <laughs> he's do you like, know what I mean? Like yeah. it's, he's, he's just the kindest he, most wonderful man yeah. He is just like basically a genie that's like his. Gives the best hugs. Yes oh such a good hugger dave if you're listening come round. <laughs> we need to hug yeah. <laughs> jesse it's so lovely to have you on the program thank you we're for gonna having have me. more live music from you in a little bit but mm -hmm. for now jesse where thank you very Thanks. much Six Music Recommend. Just want you to know, because you were saying how high it was. They were found, like, A, the fact that you were like, oh, it's high, like, adorable, and B, spellbound. I think uh, they would want me to pass on. I just did some, messages. like, voodoo high pitch thing on them, and it, like, <laughs> made them think they liked it. No, that's really Like sweet, a kind thanks. of a snake charmer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So I think the last time I saw you live before today was probably at Latitude last year, oh, yeah. which was great. <laughs> it was raining just before I got on, I think. And so I was like, right, got to hype up the crowd. You hype were, up the you crowd. were really like... Yeah, I really... I learned about wearing flat shoes on stage and it changed my life because <laughs> I actually could walk around and I actually got a bit of a workout up there. Like, okay. I'd be like thrusting and jumping and going in and high-fiving and you can't do that when you're tottering on like heels. No. So, so is it going to be flats? When absolutely. You... Okay. I'm never doing heels ever again. You've got flats on today but they are pretty spectacular. I, didn't... Yeah. I thought they were like a neon but they're actually bright red. No, I've got neon toes. Neon toenails. Yeah. That's what I'm Clashy. thinking of. God, oh, no, but a, pl a pleasing clash. Love a pleasing clash. Um, so so you said that you'd gone to Poland. I think that was one festival yeah. that you managed to fit yeah. in this summer. But obviously the kind of cycle that, that this album is on is not, mm. not quite hitting the festival no. season. Um, so tell me about the tour. I mean, what's the, you said that you're doing mostly churches, which sounds good acoustically. <laughs> We're yes. looking forward to, to No, not that. acoustic. No, but the, oh, the yes, acoustic yes, wise. Yes, I mean, yes, yes, yes. That'll be lovely. But what about the kind of live setup? Tell me about, about well, that. Well, I've got a new player in my band called Mitch. And Hello, Mitch. Mitch. Mitch Jones is on um, keys. And uh, I've got my faithful Joe Newman on, on guitar. But yeah, I've got like, I've um, added to the family with Mitch. And then um, it's going, it's, it's, fa it's fun. It sounds really fun. It sounds quite big. Yeah. The, the song, I, I had the audience in mind when I was writing this album, which I didn't have the chance to have 
the first time around. Mm. So it was quite nice to be like, oh, how's that going to sound? And, you know, I love doing festivals. So I just was like, I want this to bit to bit work. And if I was, a, you know, because I go to festivals all the time um, and I did before I was singing at them. Um, and so I know those feelings and I wanted yeah. to try and get those feelings. And maybe I won't and nobody will sing the songs back to me. But I had the audience in mind and it felt really good. So the live thing, yeah, it's feeling... It's feeling fun. I don't think it's too far away from what the first record sounded like live in the the way that we kind of address it. But it just sounds um, a bit a bit bigger, I think. Okay, yes. that sounds really exciting. You did quite a lot of touring with the last album. I mean, as well as festivals, there was yeah. I think quite a long uh, trip into America mm, and touring mm, over there. Mm. Have you got your kind of uh, touring routine down pat now? Do you kind of know Ish. what? Yeah. Yeah. What, what is it? What do you need to, to survive and prosper and, and, you know, play good gigs on the road? Um, I need my Dr. Nelson's inhaler, which is like the ceramic pot that looks like a bong, but it's not. And uh, you just put hot water I don't, in it. Jesse, I don't know what one sorry, of those sorry. is. Sorry, but sorry. But don't, don't explain. <laughs> just carry on. Oh, yeah. Um, anyway, so... Um, so, no, and, so you've got doc, Dr. Nelson's. It's just basically, it's like a very old-fashioned um, pot, which um, is a ceramic pot, and it's got... Uh, a spout that basically you breathe you breathe in and then it breathes it out and it just steams your throat okay because every there are you know like serious proper singers who come in here everybody has their own kind of shamanic sort of slightly witchcrafty secret we had uh y oak in in a while back they had one um and, and we had the entertainer's secret i think with them have you are you familiar with the entertainer's no. secret that's like i think it's a little spray or like a little um ah. like a lozenge of some kind well, like of like tablet coat. yeah but it's basically like the bottles like because it's called the entertainer's secret it's got a little bow tie on the bottle and it's wearing <laughs> a little tux absolutely adorable <laughs> That's American. My mum got me something that sounds like this thing where it's like almost, you know, it kind of uh, puts like a, like a serum on your throat. So it kind of, coats you know, coats it. But my one, my mum got me some like next one, which was like had like bull's semen in it or something like that. And I was like, mum, I'm not having that no, stuff. It no. was, I was like, I'm not having it's it. Not it was nice, some like weird it? Chinese medicine that like, I was like, I'm all right. I'm just going to, I'm just going to warm, warm up a little bit more. But it's disgusting. And yeah, I never tried no, it again. That, that, it doesn't sound, it doesn't sound. Yeah, it's just, don't just, get that one. Get the entertainment. Honest, Jess, entertainment it just doesn't secret. sound worth it apart from anything it else. It's really great. <laughs> so you need a bit of that but not that one not that one your, just, your just use the um the the, the 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 steamer and then i do the these like very actually i was i was, I was warming up before i came here um because you know i'm just getting back into the swing of things sure. and you know doing live radio is new again um so i was warming up with this um cd that i've got and it's like <laughs> things like that right and then you like because i tr got trained classically i always when i'm warming up i sound quite classical mm -hmm. well as cla I'm like a really poor man's, mean posh? Class, like like, poor man's just posh. like um really posh right and it's like Lo -ho -ho, like and, that. <laughs> and i was singing and i was doing it all and then the two-year-olds the twins upstairs started going me <laughs> And I was like, oh my God, I've just been embarrassed. Like, I can't do that again. So some kids were joining in. Yeah, obviously. these, like, they were taking the mick out of me, I felt. Oh. These two-year-olds, my neighbours. Do you think they're any good? It's possible. They were really they could, good. Maybe and they I, could work on the road. I, 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 I like to think that later. my projection was really good because the fact that they were hearing it and they were getting the notes exactly the same. <laughs> but I, then I stopped because I got embarrassed. So as long as you've got your prep, you're okay. You, you sound yeah. quite, like, quite low, quite yeah, low I maybe I'll have maybe a whiskey for Dutch courage if I'm really scared. Um, someone told me about this thing that Judy Garland used to do oh, yeah. where she'd... Um, don't she'd... do most of those things. It depends what it is. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's not doing the car. Uh, okay, so she'd tap like her kind of collarbone. There's yeah. like that tender bit. Just, just kind underneath. of a, Do you know what I mean? You feel it. You underneath kind of tap on your collar, collarbone. Yeah. It, it, just underneath and it's yeah. kind of a bit of a tender. Do that and it, you, apparently she'd tap it and it would get her adrenaline going. Really? So when I feel a bit like drowsy or a bit like, oh, I can't be bothered tonight. Um, and um, I do that and tap myself in and get ready ah. but you'd look like a nutter if you're doing it at a festival people don't want to approach you they're not even going to ask you if your in is all right you're just going nah, 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 like that so yeah sometimes do that getting you hyped up yeah, kind of get, the, get, get it, the heart going a bit and get it yeah that leads me to a thing actually which is that um you are unusual for, for as a session guest for us in that the people that come in and play for us you know aren't always 
to some extent a pop star and you kind of straddle both the divides of of you know kind of being a being a songwriter and and making your own stuff or neither one or the other i could also be no (laughs) no but you kind of inhabit inhabit both worlds and i wonder obviously having come from a background as you say classically trained and then you know session work and and kind of doing Mm. it as a job yeah how comfortable are you in in that world in that bit over there the pop bit I just I turn into Alan Partridge when I meet famous people and I kind of like stick my, I'm like I Taylor Swift said hi to me at um it was like a party and you know t- weirdly Taylor you know Taylor Swift's there and she actually I think it was um, now I'm sounding like I'm name dropping I'm not I'm trying to show you that I'm, I'm an asking idiot. the question okay my fine okay blame so me it was a Don't blame Ed, Ed, Ed Sheeran's party in New York I think he'd just done SNL and it right. was like and we'd just written this song together and so he was like, please come to the party. I go, and he's obviously really good friends with Taylor Swift. So Taylor Swift's there looking leggy and beautiful. She's like eight feet tall, She's isn't she? really, like, tall. Mm-hmm. And there's me, like, obviously loving my flats because not... Well, just wearing flats always. And um, and she, she goes, oh, my God, you're Jessie Ware. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> and then she went, oh, my God, wow, this moment's, like, is my everything. And I went, oh! Oh, yeah, Colt, thank you very much. <laughs> and then I kind of just turn into like the least pop star person ever, just like a really awkward uncle from like Colchester. I don't know. <laughs> that sounds a perfect. Don't, don't ever change. It was don't, re- but- it's really fun for everyone else around um, to watch me kind of turn into this really awkward kind of man no no i think it sounds <laughs> that a perfect be adorable don't change okay I'll try don't not. change jesse don't okay. don't get pop star patter it's not right. really. but apparently taylor swift is quite quite good crack that's what i've heard i mean she dances and she was really nice and she was i have i i really liked her yeah lovely girl good yeah uh, but let's not talk about her let's talk about you and the next song that you're about to to okay. perform for us because um we've heard the single so what are you going to do for us this time and what can you tell us about this track before we hear it um so this is we're going to do wildest moments and um it's i guess i think it feels like the most well-known song of the last album um it it, it it kind of became like this culty thing where it's like it didn't it didn't chart it didn't do anything it did um but it it kind of became this thing online where people watch the video a lot and pe- it's the one that really people sing at me in um the shows so uh, yeah this is wildest moments and it's about my best mate sarah and how we had a fight at my manager's um wedding and uh cakes were thrown and we fell out an and actual food fight at yeah, a wedding it, i thought it was quite fun and then she took it too far okay and then we didn't speak but we you know we we yeah it's about those okay. highs and lows I of was a gonna female ask you friendship. i was gonna ask you to intro the track but i'm gonna have to pause and ask another question supplementary question Sorry. you have a wedding coming up oh yeah it, is she gonna be there she's is my maid of honor so right. she needs to stay away so from the meringues have you had the talk about like you know even if it gets a bit tasty i just worry i just worry that if i have the talk then there'll be like it's in her head you know there'll be some hummus or tzatziki thrown before the day so i'm just you don't want to plant the seed yeah i've also got her identical twin sister Uh, we're going to they balance it oh she's going to kill me thank god she's in turkey she can't hear this so um yeah no we are fine we're brilliant and we've calmed down after the years but you know what it's like with girls like we it's so intense yeah and you love each other and then you want to kill each other so we we love each other all the time now i'm up for a food fight i think that's fine i just wanted to check i'm more likely to have one with my husband to be i know he's gonna like push me in the pool or something like that with my dress on and i want to kill him that's what's gonna happen i think (laughs) i'll be like it's over done (laughs) oh god well jesse listen thank you very much (laughs) for uh giving this track such a splendid intro and for being here today (laughs) thank you and i hand it back over to you this is jesse we're live on six music Thank you. 
Jessie Ware. Jessie, I'm so glad you told us the story behind that song because mm. obviously having heard it quite a lot, I would never have imagined it was about a food fight at a wedding. I know. And now that's, that's like, changed know, it forever for me. I hope it hasn't me. ruined it for no, you. No, it's just given, it's imbued it with this brilliant kind of extra dimension. I love it when that happens. Trifle and... Yeah, yeah. like sticky and dresses and hair <laughs> and shouting. It was intense. Yeah. All the best things in the world. Yeah. Uh, Jessie Ware on BBC Six Music, the new album, out in October. Yeah. Really excited Thank about that. You. And the gigs. And of course, the single tough love is out now yeah cheers thanks <laughs> the edinburgh festivals on the